<laughs> I knew you couldn't get enough of our sexy content. Let's have a quickie. Welcome back, all you sexy souls. It's Mariah here, and I'm really excited to go over another quick episode of condensed sexy content. But before I do, I just want to take um, a moment to make a big old shout out to all of our patrons who support us on Patreon. Um, I just want to say thank you so much because the podcast really could not go on without all of you. And if you are interested in supporting the podcast financially as low as $5 a month, you get really great, awesome things, early access to our episodes. Um, we do digital content, freebies on there, meet once a month or once every other month for our live Q and A's. It's a really, really fun way to just get more extra salty, sexy content. You can go to Patreon dot com forward slash salty sex cast and you do have to type in that into your um, address bar you cannot search for us online or in the patreon um, app just because we are adult content all right so let's get into our quickie right now which i don't want to go that quick right now i want to enjoy and savor this moment my goal isn't to be done as fast as possible today. My goal is to explore outer course. And outer course is um, a term that started to circulate in the 1980s, and it really was centered around safe sex campaigns, but really it just means non-penetrative sex. Some folks even consider it to be um, where the end goal is not climax or, you know, orgasm, where um, they're really using the word outer course instead of foreplay, because foreplay is kind of hinting to it's supposed to be something before, and there's an expectation that there's going to be something that leads up afterwards, this foreplay, after this foreplay, whether it's penetrative sex or orgasm, um, it just kind of has a little bit of expectation in that um, word. So outer course leaves a lot of room to be explored and um, some of the pressure off. So outer course looks a lot like foreplay. You can do a lot of things just like you do in foreplay. You know, it can be sexy talk. It can be rehashing good sex times or even fantasies, you know, so you're talking about things, really just kind of working up, teasing each other. It can go to cuddling, making out, dry humping with clothes on, or dry humping with clothes off, as long as there's no penetration in there. Um, massages, even mutual masturbation, or what I like to call uh, lazy fucking. <laughs> um, again, so there's no penetration within that. Um, even external toy play can definitely be um, something for outer course. Uh, BDSM. Quite a bit of things in BDSM can be considered outer course. As long as there's no penetration involved, absolutely a play scene or, or a scene could definitely be considered outer course. Remember, you're being intimate and sexual without any penetration or even with the one goal of orgasm in mind. So spanking, bondage, role playing, a lot of those that don't consist of penetration are absolutely live under that outer course umbrella. And even oral sex, a lot of folks believe that are is part of outer course. Some also say that that um, is great to stay off the table when you're considering outer course, especially when outer course is the goal of limiting STI exposure. And so that oral sex, again, can lead to spreading STI. So if your main goal is to stay safe and have that safe sex practice, um, you'll just want to use protection when you're practicing oral sex, either a condom or a dental dam and other tools like that. But there's something really, really great about outer course, especially when you're considering long-term partnerships or relationships that have 
maybe forgotten (laughs) some of these things and go right to the main course or the main action and that's penetrative sex and orgasm is kind of the goal. But if you take a moment to slow down, maybe talk to your partner, especially if it's from a long-term relationship and talk about how fun intercourse sounds and how you'd really like to experience intimacy by massaging and cuddling and just kissing and that be your intimate time and that the goal isn't for orgasm or penetration right away, it can be really fun to reinvigorate some of those feelings that you forgot or some of those fun things that you used to love but maybe haven't experienced since dating or early on in your relationship. Um, We all fall victim to some of our routines, especially if it's in a long-term relationship. I know I have. And so just considering things that you can totally pick up and put on the table, um, like outer course, to um, explore one another in a new light. Um, It's also a great way if penetrative sex leads to pain or if you're avoiding pregnancy or you are pregnant or just recently had a baby and you're wanting to heal from that or um, high-risk pregnancy, outer course is a great way to still stay intimate and connected with a partner or partners and without having that penetration. It's also a great option if um, one of the members of your sex party <laughs> It suffers from erectile dysfunction and struggles to hold an erection or um, premature ejaculation. Um, That's another way to extend an intimacy session or experience intimacy with one another without that expectation of typical performance. I want to say typical performance and just performance in general. Um, There's so many ways to still build that connection with a partner or partners um, that doesn't have to include uh, penetration. Then um, even some folks don't like to have sex on their periods or um, are healing from a recent surgical procedure or other health things that are going on. Um, Maybe even it's a a breakout of herpes and they really still want to be intimate with their partner. Um, but don't want to spread that to their partner. There's really great ways to still stay intimate when you're thinking and considering outer course. One thing I hope that I have stressed throughout today is that there really is no right or wrong way to engage in outer course. You can call it foreplay. You can call it outer course. You can call it fooling around. It is up to you and it's up to you and your partner or partners Um, how you want to address this, but it's hopefully it's just another vocabulary word you can put in your toolkit and know that you have so many options to still be connected with yourself and with others. And um, that doesn't have to put you at risk. It doesn't have to just only lead to one thing. Um, Expectations could be off the table and really explore all these new things. So hopefully I want to challenge all of you to add or outer course into your vocabulary and explore what that means for you. And what do you like? Is there something that it's been a long time that you've explored, or maybe you're just not ready for penetrative sex with your partner or just all together. It's a great way to still honor that sexual side of you as a human being. Hope you all have a great week and we'll see you next week for some more sexy content. Bye. (laughs) Thanks for the quickie. See you next week.